What's up? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here on this beautiful day in October in my garden and I wanted to do a rundown of some of my fall mushroom projects. Um, I'm in the garden in the back so right now I'm facing north and you can see I've got this beautiful oak tree behind us um, and then I planted some um, some inoculated logs along the north fence so that's going to be right behind me back here um, i'll flip around and do a close-up of those and then i'm also going to be planting um, my morels for the third year now so i'm going to be doing a little bit different this time i wanted to do a hoop house to protect um, the spawn over the winter and then i um my plan is in the spring i want to install uh, a, a sprinkler system or just something to help um, keep the humidity content whether that's drip lines or sprayers or both um, I'm trying to really dial in the moisture content to about 60% um, in the springtime so I'm gonna build that um, right to the left over here and then I've got my um, King Strafaria beds um, on the north side from earlier and I moved my raised beds on the top of that and I'll explain why. And then I'm, I've also got some uh, bluefoot that I'm going to plant under some straw on the south side next to these inoculated logs. Okay, so we've got these logs over here. You can see this is an aspen, um, just a downed aspen tree. And I inoculated a bunch of shiitake so you can see this one's a maple it's got a bunch of shiitake spawn and that's going to be sitting on the north side where it gets some some nice shade and there's also some old piapino mushrooms next to this mint what do you know all right so i winterized these rock roses in the hopes that they'll survive the frost especially just the wind in february but um these are the rock roses that i have planted with the porcini mushrooms so hopefully these can survive their first winter okay and then this is the area where i'm going to build the hoop house so i'll be um doing a quick video on that and then i'll show the uh the bags, the spawn, but the idea is that there will be bags placed on top of the soil and then these rings will cover it um, so that it'll keep the moisture in. Okay, and then this is our strafaria bed right behind me here. And I really liked the addition of these raised beds with the shade cloth. I think it's gonna help create more of a microclimate right here. And I'm going to add some straw um, with some more mushroom spawn and then that'll beef up this uh, strafaria bed for next year and I'm also going to kind of extend it around the corner to see if these raised beds will provide some extra cover. Um, right now these are a bunch of the, um, the sunflowers after they had um, seeded out. My friend Zach and I we shred them up and we're going to use this as the substrates for the strafaria so i'm super excited about that great way to utilize the old garden waste and um, i'll go ahead and start inoculating these and then i'll cover them with straw maybe in a day or two um, it's pretty warm out but the temperatures are supposed to get a little bit lower um, here coming up so i'm going to build the hoop house inoculate these and inoculate the blue foot over against that north side All right, I've got my hoop house constructed here. So basically the idea is that there's uh, two trenches that I'm going to lay the blocks on um, and then poke holes in them for exposure to the soil. And then I'm gonna try to put the irrigation in the rivets and the differences in um, the surface area or just the wicking effect of the moisture should bring the moisture up to the bags on top and then i'm going to put um, shade cloth over these 
to protect them during the winter and to keep that humidity in. And then I've got my drip line right here that I'll hook up in spring. All right, so I laid out the first row. You can see um, basically on my morale bags, I'm just sealing them tight with some rubber bands. And then I'm just taking this scalpel blade here and going through and stabbing a bunch of little holes. And the idea is that the mycelium is gonna travel out of those holes and then spread into the soil and then at the different elevations and um, different areas of oxygen exchange, we'll start to see pins. And then the key is to maintain the moisture content around 60%. And then hopefully we don't have any hail and we'll get some fruits. All right, I've got some generic um, shade cloth here and some zip ties that I'm gonna use to attach and look at how perfect that worked out. It's crazy, some things just work. Um, I did not plan that, but we're gonna have some nice shade. All right. Here is the final product. I just watered these guys in. So you can see it's got some nice shade, a little bit of water resistance. I'm not too concerned about water protection or anything. I'm gonna, just gonna hook up the drip line, but it is uh, pretty shady. So it's gonna help out in um, those sunny days, not like today. And it looks like I gotta grab this bag. All right guys, I'll keep you posted. All right guys, I've got my morel tent all set. It's been about a week now since I put this up and it's held pretty um, strongly against uh, some wind and rain, but I am concerned a little about the snow. So I'm gonna just double down with this blue tarp here and I've got some, um, some stakes that kind of spin into the ground to help against any high winds that we might get over the winter. So I'll just finish this up with uh, this extra heavy duty tarp. And then in the springtime, when I set up my drip system, I'll take that off and uh, open it back up like this. <laughs> 